that's all. Oh, no, that's easy. It's not nice. All right. Hello, 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 and welcome to the fourth episode of the Grown Woman Podcast. Ah! I do that every time, and I'm not grown. sure why. We didn't say something like that. We grown right? or something. I'm too grown for this. I'm too grown for this. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Well, first, I want to start off by, like always, telling you guys to like, share, subscribe, leave your comments, ask your questions, all that good, good, good stuff for us. And we would like to say thank you to the artificial makeup and photo where fantasy becomes reality. Yes. Got anything else? Thank you. There we go. Um, starting us out, we will introduce ourselves. To my right, we have Vitamin B underscore Brittany Shook. Big N615 here. And to my left, Jamila the Journalist. Yeah, and that's us. So welcome. Yeah. Today we're talking about. Sex again. This is sex yep. conversation part two. Part two. But this time we're going to get a little baby. bit deeper. A little bit spiritual, if you will. If you will. We're going to talk about virginity. And we're going to talk about soul ties. Because they're very real. I had somebody hit me up recently and said they didn't believe in it. But we'll get to that. Well, I mean, some people don't even believe in virginity. If y'all looked at our post from last week, some people think that virginity is a social construct. Brittany? Yes, I do. <laughs> I really do. I really do. Um, Why do you think that? Um, okay, so. Um, oh, my crap. Oh, my All right. goodness. Uh, um, I guess we can just leave it there. Uh, I was going to do like a sexy, like, dip. Okay, you can dip. Dip. Maybe. The writers will think. Right. Five. Four. Okay, so. Break it back up. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Here you go. Um, okay. I do. Well, okay, so just a disclaimer on me. Oftentimes, I'm contrary just to be contrary. Okay. Um, also, some of my points may come out a little contradictory just because that's just me. I like just fueling stuff and giving dif different point of views. Okay. But I do believe that um, virginity is a social construct. Um, just because, so I guess historically, the whole virgin thing was put on women and about their purity and it had to do with marriage also um there were no dna tests back in the day so if you banged a virgin it was supposed to kind of guarantee that if she had a baby it was yours therefore um dealing with inheritance but also with that it more if you look at the definition of sex it comes like uh, a penis penetrating a woman. So with that, I feel like it's what a, a heteronormative also con construct because it's saying that the man is penetrating the woman. Therefore, it's putting more emphasis on his virginity being a virgin and that's the thing that men go after. If she's not a virgin, she's like um, considered not to be one that could be married. However, for a man, what what defines if he's a virgin? What defines, I guess, if he loses his virginity other than, um, other than his word? Um, yeah. So also, I had my points earlier. Yeah, and it just left me so that. But then also with the virginity thing, a woman is down for losing her virginity. She's a hoe. Then a man, if he wants to keep his, he's clowned. So, but then when it comes to our LGBTQ, uh, Z, sorry out there, um, don't be me up. Um, if say a woman never gets penetrated, is she an eternal, forever virgin? Because I mean, whatever they do, is it like? I'm sure. I mean, but I'm saying if it's not the use of a dildo, does that make you a forever virgin? Or also. Yes. It's not okay. Sex is not just penis and vagina, right? There's we're talking types about of sex. Yeah, it is. But we're talking There's about angle, losing vagina. your virginity, though. I mean, but then what about the person gets raped? So are they forever like, oh, you're not a virgin? That's fucked up. You could be a born again virgin. I mean, technically, you're not. I mean, I mean, I get like the whole the social part about it, but. 
at the end of the day, the technical sense is something went inside your vagina. The end. So for the first unfortunately, time. yeah, because that's what virgin is. I can be an alcohol virgin, and then yeah. I drink alcohol. I'm no longer no longer a virgin. virgin. So I mean, technically, I'm for it's unfortunate. But if you were raped, and that's the way that you lost your virginity, unfortunately, technically, technically, you're not. But yeah, I you also see willingly. what you're saying. But what I'm saying is, society is the thing that is putting emphasis on yeah. being a virgin or non-virgin. Which the whole thing was also about your hymen. But if you but one, it was like, also, everybody's timing is different. So if you play sports, ride a bike, insert a tampon. I really thought it was gonna be a lot of blood. You're, and so also with that, I also be. read that there's no such you. thing about popping your cherry. It's just that it's your first time and you don't know what the hell you're doing. You were dry as fuck and the friction really? made you bleed. Well, it was something that was never been in there, but it's like, friction like it's not supposed to be a hurtful experience like you just did maybe you weren't aroused um one because it's also a new experience i remember it's in your head yeah I'm so it's like it's always you always say oh it's gotta hurt mm -hmm. oh ow oh no what the hell no it should not hurt and everyone doesn't necessarily believe it's just like um yeah y'all were doing the wrong it was dry Probably didn't know what he was doing. You probably weren't dry because your body does its thing right on that leg. Probably just didn't know what he was doing. Exactly. So that it's led dry. to okay, some like vaginal friction. Oh, good. And, oh. and some blood. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's why I believe that it is a social construct, um, a religious thing as well and yeah that's my opinion but then also after you lose your virginity then you are you know virgin but i'm just saying we put a lot of emphasis on it so like if it's that big of a deal I I then what in your life? Then what? We put too much emphasis on it and we make it like, especially with kids. Like, even if you said like religious thing, because I knew I grew up in a very religious household and I went to purity classes where they told you basically you got to save yourself for your husband and all of this stuff. And then at the end, you go through like a process, you get like a ring, your dad puts on his finger, and basically that means you're supposed to stay pure until right. your husband puts another ring on your finger. So, like, I don't know, it's going through all of that in high school and then going to college where everybody was having sex it was just like oh i want to have sex now because everybody else has done it and i've been told all my life it's so bad and it's just like i don't know it's way too much pressure on it it should just be i don't know it's just i think real, the realness simple. yeah should be put on it like people don't know how to be real especially when it comes to like religion and churches like that other like, like the other things is based off good. of like okay the things that come with sex that can come with that's sex. what they need to focus more on yeah. so like the soul time emotional Why? emotional you may be emotionally attached to this person also you may not be in this absolutely that's what they've okay. been talking about in churches um <laughs> and <laughs> protect yourself yeah, just because he says that he's clean what the fuck is clean because we all know your clean house may look different than my clean house place so um that also uh um, the person eats what the person does, like smoking, drinking, stuff like that. That's that. Also, also the thing about having kids, you can't get pregnant. So if you're not ready to also have the responsibilities of engaging in sexual acts, maybe you're not ready to have sex. And that's for um, anybody, instead of just saying, oh, hold it out for marriage, because, yeah. okay, not too late, put you out there, but say you held out to marriage and then you got divorced, now what? Hmm. Like, is your life over now? Like, did you lose it in vain? Like, so, like, what else happens? If I like to have all these other things. Like, so what about this? What about that? Right. What about this? What about that? And so, yeah. That's why I believe it's a social construct. Okay. I'm seeing more of your side now. For sure. It's like I said, the way I grew up, it was just a bad thing, but they never said why. Right, so yeah. Kid, I'm like, yeah. But it's worse in the bowel. <laughs> in the bowel. <laughs> in the Bible yeah it's a lot of it so it's like if it's I don't it know. wasn't saying it was good in the Bible 
I mean, it wasn't saying it was good or saying it was bad. It had like bad stories about sex, and then it had like the whole thing of waiting to marry. So that was kind of like good, but the so it's like really, what is it? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it a form of control? But it's mainly for the female body, not really for the male's body. I don't know if the guys in the purity class now that I'm thinking about. I they yeah, it was, but they didn't go through the whole little walking on stage in front of the whole church. Like now, y'all see me getting my purity. Right. Now I can't really have sex, and now y'all keeping me all accountable. I guess that's why it was a big deal when I did get pregnant. Like I was like going back to church, like oh, I'm so ashamed. But it's like every one of these other kids is having sex. They just they don't have nothing to prove it. Yeah. A, a fat belly, you know what I'm saying? A pregnant belly. But I don't know. Can I ask you a personal question? If it's too personal, bleep this out. Um, is that why you ended up getting married? Um, that was part of it, for sure. The way I grew up. It wasn't just the church. It was also my parents. It was also how I felt. Because I was shacking up. Oh, right. With a kid, but I shouldn't... I won't speak on that. But, you know, so okay. sometimes, sometimes that's okay. And you don't have to make that commitment to get married. Because you might change your mind, like she said. Like, what if you, have, what if you want to get divorced? It's like, oh, well, we already got married, and that's a whole bill now, you know? So, yeah. That's why they should not put so much pressure on it. For sure. Yeah, I think it's a thing that. Why are you over here reading me? It's your eyes. Like, <laughs> this whole conversation. Is like, I feel like it's a thing that makes us, they try to make, make us police our body and then feel guilty about our sexual experience yes because honestly i did the big girl thing when i first started having sex i was like oh i gotta get some birth control right but then i'm just be honest my mom found my birth control like coming you know how you come home you come home from a college right winter break whatever she said she was looking for an ink pen and my purse they be lying you know how they (laughs) snooze why you look for an ink pen at two o'clock in the morning but she said she was looking for an ink pen she just happened to see my pills woke me up like what is this me being a responsible adult right i'm going back to sleep now like what you mean <laughs> but it was like even stuff like that like i don't know it just intimidated me made right. me feel guilty for having sex made me feel guilty for being a response that's so silly now I'm looking back on it but it's like sometimes you have to be an adult and just make your own decision you have to be a grown woman and be like i understand what my mom taught me but at the end of the day she's not living my life right she's not going to raise my kid you know what i'm saying if i have one so yeah, that's just my advice from a from a wise one right there. <laughs> I've been through it all, y'all. <laughs> so what do you have to yeah. say, Big Ange? Right, you were right. I was just I was just listening and taking it in. I mean, I get it. I guess from the social aspect of it. However, I guess the part that I'm thinking about the most is. I mean, I get it. It's your body. Do whatever you want to do with it put emphasis on virginity don't put emphasis on virginity but at what point do you like I mean do you not like have any type of accountability for the things that you do with your body or you just use the whole it's my body whatever because at the end of the day that's also a social construct that you put out there because you feel like oh everybody else is putting emphasis on my virginity but you got the extreme opposite you have the extreme so, opposite right especially when you have like I love Amber Rose, y'all. Amber Rose is, I love her. Mm-hmm. But, I was not expecting it. But, her slut walk. Oh, gosh. I didn't really get it. Like, okay, I understand. I think that slut walk came from, like, uh, everybody calling her a slut, and she was just, like, be bold in your Yeah, situation. you know how, like, after you have sex the next day, they call it the walk of shame? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was, like, the opposite. Like, I'm walking in, I'm not shaved. And I get that. But I think that some people's perspective of what she was trying to, like her movement was just very um, perverted almost. Like it was twisted. I don't think that's what she really wanted, but I don't know, maybe it is. But it's like, yeah, you can have sex with whoever you want, of course, but you still have to be responsible, like she just said. And you have to make sure you're doing it for you. A lot of times, I feel like sometimes, um, even, I can say this because I've done it personally. When I lost my virginity, it wasn't for me. Mm Essentially, it was just because I had people in my ear telling me I wasn't a woman for real. I had people in my ear telling me how great it was, so I just did it for them in a sense. 
So it's like you have to think about your intentions. You have to think about like sex doesn't mean the person loves you. Sex doesn't right. mean the person even wants you and right. values you in that way. Right. Sex literally just means that that person wanted to have sex right. with you. Right. And I think sometimes people um, kind of, especially women, but men too, um, kind of misconstrue love as sex or sex as love and it's like those are not because the same. emphasis that is put on it. Save it for marriage. Yeah. You I'm gonna think of oh, marriage sex with anybody yeah. you love. You married you look the oh, oh my god. god. You sense. married, you love. So it's it like makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Um so you saying okay, back to what you were saying about accountability. What do you mean about accountability with that? Like hopefully you should be accountable if you have a sex. It is on you, but can you like go deeper and with me like hold yourself accountable? Like no work going on? No, I mean, I'm just them. saying like we're saying like there shouldn't be so much emphasis on virginity. Cool. However, at what point do we put emphasis on sex itself and what you're doing or not doing or mainly what you're doing because we're saying the opposite of the virginity. But like at what point do you put more emphasis on that? Or do you just say like, hey, if you're gonna have sex, have sex if you want to, just make sure you protect yourself. Like that's the message. I think the accountability you should start like when you have that talk. Like these are all things that can come from or may happen when you start engaging sexually. Um, so I feel like that's the main thing because just so many things can come from sex, good and bad. So maybe informing your kids or whatever about those things and then like say if you do come from a religious background you can add that in there as well but also let them know like all the other things that happen because i know girls that have they lost their virginity on their in their first time having sex ever they call it st oh, so it's just like damn but it's like maybe if you whomever they had to talk with or not had to talk with told them okay use protection protect yourself then like that may not would have happened the same time she had sex she got pregnant so it was like ooh, um just double whammies after double whammies and yeah. it was more so just like but once she was younger but it was just more so like oh save it to, for marriage and then like you know we've all said that we've had influences from friends and stuff and your friends honestly don't know shit so especially the young yeah, kids. Yeah, and they that's don't my know. thing. Like, do y'all think that young kids should be having sex, or do you think that's no. a grown, grown folk thing? You need to grow the fuck up. Which I guess I would understand why your mom might have been like, "Yo, sis, what's up?" Because as much as we want to say we're responsible, right? right. However, <laughs> yeah, you can be responsible with getting birth control. However, like I'm just using this example. I was 18 when I lost my virginity. I'm not a fucking adult at 18. As much as you're we want to say, you're not. Oh, I'm an adult. I'm in college. So the fuck what? You ain't paying that one motherfucking bill. You ain't doing shit. You just left the fucking house. You're a child. Yeah. So I understand why your mom might have been like, I right, you got birth control, but what the fuck are you doing? Because you don't understand that. There's a lot of stuff that goes on mentally that we're not even thinking about until it happens. So it's like children need to sit the fuck down because your dumb ass don't need to be having sex. It's funny because I'm thinking about like, in middle school, I remember I went from white ass Ezel Harding to Hank, what is it, Haynes Middle, where all the black people are. Never been around any black people. That's like me, I'm from Harding to East. Okay, <laughs> but when I got there, they were talking about, for one, I just thought twerking was a joke. I didn't really know that twerking was twerking. I didn't know what twerking was, was either. Like, oh. I didn't know what freaking was. <laughs> okay. I was like talking about freaking and I didn't know anything like, about twerking at the age of like 11. <laughs> See that wasn't me. I wasn't. I just wasn't around that. And I wasn't around this whole. I found out about gangs at Haynes, sucking dick, the importance See, of going titties, swimming, all that. Yeah, and it's like, like I didn't piss with your tongue. I didn't even know that. Know what that I didn't even knew that. Right. Like, but then it's with like your <laughs> everybody was already doing all of these things that I had no idea I what it was. You're a child. I had yeah. the opposite thing. So we would twerk. We danced or whatever. Like I think at, the, at the skating rink, right. we would twerk. We had, and our parents would throw us parties. Like I remember, um, it was like a group of us. All of our birthdays were in November, so 
So November was the birthday party month. Like we would rent out the Northeast YMCA. Our parents would have DJs. Everybody's in there twerking and dancing. I've been to her party one year. Probably. <laughs> uh, so everybody's in there twerking. However, and also, I mean, we were not thinking about sex at all. It's just twerking. Have yeah, we're just twerking. Hey. Like. The yeah. most anyone ever did was get fingered. And we thought, oh my God, that we could get pregnant from getting fingered. What if he jacks off and the sperm gets on his fingers and he inserts it in me and oh my God, now I'm pregnant. What the fuck? Like that's the dumbest thing ever. But one, like you said, we are children, but we were not, one, we didn't, I don't think not that you dumb. had the sex <laughs> talk, yeah. but not really the sex talk. It was just like, Save it for marriage or whatever, not really knowing about um, digital. I remember a teacher said, Oh, y'all out there having that digital sex. And we were like, What is digital sex? And then she was like, Yeah. And we were like, Oh. oh. Okay. And we didn't get that. So it was just like, Yeah, as kids, we should not be having sex. Correct. Yeah. We did not. But also, tell us. In tell us T like tell us things um so i remember it was so we don't go out trying to be yeah, ourselves so out on our own. Lying, it was making up stories one girl who was maybe like 12 or 13 she ended up getting pregnant and we were all like <laughs> however but to, for me it was like it wasn't necessarily her fault maybe if she would have been informed about it um yeah, she's a child, child she's, <laughs> she's a child so like okay if you have sex you know you can get pregnant this is how much it costs to raise a child more stuff like that so how do you, how do you feel like what do you, as a parent what would you want to give your child i know i want to give my child private school. I know I want to give my child blase, 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 well, blase. You can't afford it at 12 or 13. You, I can't afford this shit now. So, yeah, that's why I don't have any kids. So, I mean, you just sure. put it out there like, okay, so this is how much it costs to raise a child. How do you have kids? By having unprotected sex or a time break, whatever. So, this may happen. I feel like that may be like, you know what, I may clink it up. You know, I may be a little more cautious on what I'm doing. Why? Because I can't afford to raise a kid. But then you also got the people who I girls was, that we want to have babies and make pregnancy packs. But anyway, that's the whole thing. I was trying to say something yeah. about um, people who are adults that maybe don't have their priorities together and they don't have a lot of money. Maybe they should be having sex either. That's just my personal nope. opinion. You know how they had that little so broke niggas don't deserve pussy mm -hmm. movement yeah. or whatever? I actually feel that. Because, like, why are you worried about sex if you can't even, like, be get your priorities together, like get your money together. You know what I'm saying? Like, where are you gonna bring the girl to your mom? I don't know. That's another concept. Right. Right? Like, it's like almost the same as being a child. If you don't have your stuff together, don't be having sex. Cause you could produce a kid and bring a kid in this world. Or just be money. making sure you're ready for whatever comes from it. Financially, mentally. Right. Physically, like, like just make sure you're ready for sure. Cause Sex, it, it brings a lot, like you said. So I feel like that's why I feel like kids should be having it. But I mean, kids have it every, every day. So. Like recently in the news here, I think I said it last episode, is a guy that it was just charged with um, giving a girl HIV, exposure to HIV. Was this in Nashville? It's in Nashville. I saw that. Um, allegedly he's been married before, so I guess she doesn't care. Um, but whatever, to each his own. But I forgot my train of thought with that. He didn't tell him what was on the He didn't, so he didn't tell him. So that's got kind of one of the things like being like, you have to be prepared for whatever comes, but also you have to take control of your own sexual health. Which is one of so, the things those are. And like, uh, if you want to say, like, hey, bruh. Or for the fellas. Let me see that paper. Hey, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's go, let's go get tested together. together. Yeah. And so, like, that to me is just all about being healthy with your sexuality and the things that you're engaged in. Make it normal, too. It just like, right. Because yeah. nothing's wrong with it. Like, we're both adults and we care about our sexual health. Yeah. We, we got, got our doctor. We got our life together. We got a priority. I straight. can log into my phone, go to my health portal, bam. Yeah, These are my know. results. Okay. Yeah. What are yours? Even prostitutes do that. Ho, oh, right. yeah. escorts. Like, are you saying that you can't do something simple like that? Like, even that's a red flag. <laughs> that. Yeah, I know, right. People in relationships. Me and well. when we first got together, I was just like, I love you, but 
When's the last time you got texted? <laughs> okay, how about you go do that? And then later, I think it was about, maybe about four or five months afterwards, I was like, so can you go back and get tested? Or you was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, go back right. and get tested. Because, I mean, yeah, I get it. We're in a relationship, but nigga, take your ass to the motherfucking doctor. I'm going. I'll show you my papers if you want me to. You get tested. Just because you're in a relationship does not protect you. Right. Mm -hmm. Crazy bitches. Because I know a girl <laughs> was in a relationship. And what? That ass got her beats. Damn. And you're stuck with it. I've got a friend like that. Damn. So and that's forever. For fucking ever now. I mean, she's living her happily ever after now. Well, her man, she got it under control. Whatever. She don't really have power. But, it's just but still. you gotta protect yourself. Yeah. Fuck a nigga. Should beat his ass. But your right. sexual health is your responsibility. Is your fucking responsibility. Fuck these niggas. So sorry. It ain't me. Leading <laughs> into the next thing about. We kind of like that off, but anyway, yeah. sex is up. such a big and deep. It really is. I feel it's like, like what we're talking about sexual innuendo right there. Big, but anyway, big, big deep. deep. Um, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to do it. Yeah, you left me there. Right, right. sorry. Yeah. Let me get what you doing. Yeah. Get it's good. Um, so, like I guess said, it, that's part of it being. Which, like you were saying about, or everybody was saying, I guess, about the things that you're not ready for. Because if you believe in soul ties, then that's another big thing that comes with losing your virginity and sex. Somebody sexually so, knows it. And I also, <laughs> like, every time another big thing like, that comes. <laughs> so I also think soul ties are, is another. So what are soul ties, ties, guys? We have to let people know because maybe somebody doesn't really know. Them what they are. But oh, you yeah. can have a soul tie in a friendship, in I think it's a form relationship. Of attachment. Yes. You can have biological soul ties. Mm -hmm. They're not always Google negative. Urban dictionary. Yeah. Soul ties. A social construct again. What is a soul tie? When it's people right. use the term soul tie, what they usually mean is that in the spiritual realm, I'll so I've been jerking. Because we are spirits, guys. Our souls are body. united to someone else, and that tie is binding us to a person we don't want to be bound to, and is hampering our efforts at moving ahead in life. That comes from Google. All I heard was to love, honor, and vacuum. Hindering your growth. Not moving forward. That's all I heard. So to me, when we talk about accountability, you're not being accountable because a fuck boy or a fuck girl shows fuck tendencies before you have souls even tied. So like, unless you're not really no, there be red flags. There be red flags. So it's like be before red you like, every time you just be ignoring them. I don't know. I used to be a fuck girl. I used to be a fuck girl. I don't care about putting that out there. Me too. And I, you couldn't tell. Even now when I talk to old people, I'm like, yo. Sorry, you can so okay, maybe they can tell. You can no, tell. No, no you can tell. Maybe they knew they was getting their stuff. But that's like, no, you can say I was not as well, well but I feel like I recognize what boys and fuck boys yeah. recognize what I was doing is just it just worked for the both of us at that time. And yeah. for me, and I feel like it's a social construct for you to tell me that because I had sex with this person this time at that time that now that person forever is a part, part of you. me. What the fuck? That's like a lie. And then also with that, if you can cleanse everything else, get your shoppers right and sage. Why can't I sage? I mean, you can do that part for sure. But I'm saying, why can't I sage that part? You can, but do out. you? I do the sage. Is, you, but if you stand out, I'm saying you sage your your vagina. I, I sage <laughs> myself. I sage <laughs> myself <laughs> from the head, the top of my head. To the soles of my feet, and I will sage around my womb and my heart because I've had more connections. Well, I feel like deeper connections from maybe sitting and having a conversation with somebody than just saying physically, I want to bust the nut. Bam, that's what I want you for. I want to bust the nut. All right, Sayonara, peace out. Maybe we can do this thing again, maybe not. Whatever. I don't have any connection to you other than like. I wanted to bust the nut in that moment. I physically wanted to have sex. So saying that you are now or I'm forever a part of me or I'm forever a part of you, 
That's a lot. I don't know if it means. I don't know if it means like just anybody though. Like I feel like they're talking about more so people that you have relationships with. That's where I. That's where I got. Because I feel like a soul tie is someone that you're connected to. Like, what does a soul tie look like? To me, <laughs> I'm probably gonna get some hate for this, but I don't care. Unpopular opinion. To me, a soul tie looks like Janae Aiko in Big Sean. That to me is just, <laughs> just I'm just being honest. It looks like a soul tie because this man cheated on you and did all this horrible stuff to you. I mean, you told us in the songs, baby girl, like you were suicidal. He, you told us. And then you turn around and every time I see you, you're with him now. And it's just like, that's attachment. Like, yes. it's great. Like, I don't know. Her spirit, every time I look at a picture of them, like, speaks to me. It's like, help me. Like, <laughs> I can't get over it. It is attachment. And I'm digmatized and I love him. You put a little sprinkle of love and she got a whole tattoo of his face on it. I know she got to cover it up. But still, like, we remember all that. And I feel like that all plays into being tied to him. Like, being tied to him spiritually. So, or is that self, low self-esteem? Are you tied to him spiritually or you just have I just low, that, self-esteem I just have low self-esteem where he, so maybe, maybe the, her worth fully, but or maybe like, so you've just been dealing with fucked up relationships, but then the sex is good. So you like, oh, because the sex is good, the net that equals. That's a soul tie. I don't remember, it's like, oh, that's good. So because I'm having this one good part, then, you know, I'm going to accept everything else but it's just like you know how many like, people, women are like that though so i feel like you need to boost up your self-esteem so maybe start using the dildo or it's something to that's a whole more. song about that baby get my more. nigga ain't shit so i'm so i'm saying why you leave him girl because dick too mom you never heard that song it, it came out like fine. i never know what it is it came out like years ago i'm just not like i know you but know. once again when she's talking about accountability yeah. hold yourself accountable for all that fucked up ass shit like is their dick really that bomb is it like it's what is in your mind because you're feeling it's void. a soul tie but you know, like, <laughs> she's like that's a i don't think it's a soul tie i just feel like you're feeling a what void is what is it you're feeling a void for some stuff tie. that you haven't had and then maybe you're you're feeling that void with sex it's attachment is attachment a soul tie though mm-hmm. well Another was it just a thing of like they're both they're both very unhealthy. I think another thing for soul tie because I know some people think about it as the the bad or the bad like the bad energy that that person is carrying because you are weak in that department. Now that you have had sex with them, you have now adapted that. Um, just like last week when I said something about the demons, that it's the same thing, the bad energy, the demons, whatever it is that you believe you take in. Take on the bad. So right, so some of it could be like. Maybe you weren't strong mentally and the person that you just had sex with is deep in depression and blah, blah, blah. Well, now you're starting to feel that same weight on you. I know that some people look at soul ties as that also. So mm-hmm. just say that to include that. Into so because that. I have depression and I have sex with somebody, now that person has depression. Or that that is weighing heavily on them. Not necessarily like, oh, now I'm depressed. But like it is now weighing heavily on you because you just allow this person for whatever reason mm-hmm. to insert your body and the same thing goes for guys because they need to you know protect your penises a little more but same thing goes for them i mean you've allowed yourself to enter this woman for what reason oh for instant gratification oh okay now what and it comes with a lot it comes <laughs> with that. and it's like we like we were talking about accountability well sex period is going to have some type of mental something I don't care if you're just doing it because you like this person or whatever it is, that's a problem. I don't care what anyone says, that's a problem. You're just doing shit just to do it because you're trying to prove whatever points at some point to someone. And it's like we don't realize that there are mental things that go on with this physical thing that we're doing. And so that might also lead into the whole soul tie thing. It's also we need to. What does it check yourself before you wreck yourself? So, I don't want to. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, just because I may be depressed this this day, I don't believe that or this season or this season that me having sex with somebody, I'm putting it off on you. Yeah. But I do believe in protecting my energy mm-hmm. or whatever. But I could be standing next to someone or just hearing someone's conversation. And their energy is like, I can tell it's fucked up. 
So it's like, okay, if I, if I, if I'm saying that I'm big on energy and soul ties, why would I even lay down with that person anyway? Yeah. So I feel like if you're big on protecting your energy, you should protect your energy at all costs. If it's at your job, Come on, if we your say that, but then we look at our friends. A lot of your friends don't have good energy. Know. But I mean, it's, so exactly. what you got to say to them? It doesn't matter. Her point, matter. Was, her point was, if I don't you're hang around, around somebody, those friends to those that, energy, that don't have. Still around you. So I don't have to so, hang out with my friends that have bad energy. energy. So I've like it took me years growth to get like get to that point. But the certain friends that have bad energy, where I felt like, oh, let me sit around and listen to your your bad day i realized that oh i feel down i'm like oh fuck this shit so we had to part ways like and then they tried to come back around and i'm like nah i'm good bruh like i i personally can't deal with the energy you put off your energy may be great for somebody else but for me i can't deal with that a guy that we were friends and then we also got sexually involved with each other and it wasn't like throughout like sex was decent but it wasn't like i felt down by when we had sex it was like okay we both wanted to get our rocks knocked off cool bye see you later what messed up my energy would be phone calls maybe like a week later when something was going on in this life and i'm like bro you keep doing the same shit that's why fucked up shit keeps happening that's and i had to check myself it, yeah. i had to check myself was like you know what being your friend is exhausting because you keep doing fucked up shit. So I hope it works out for you. You may need to get some counseling, but I'm going to have to step back from being your friend on that. So is that a soul tie? I'm not like, you believe I'm not soul ties or not. I'm I'm like, it wasn't gonna be so I believe in energy. So my thing was his energy was fucked up, period. Like just being like not even me talking to him. If you if you walked in a room right now, it was just this old slothy ass energy. That was fun, but you're not just like, and you don't feel like you've had like a connection. And you just said no, you was having conversations and you like, no, I, the conversation afterwards. It wasn't a sexual one. We want to fuck, we fucked, and it was that. I'm saying weeks later, because we didn't talk it died, like the next day after sex. It could be, and we didn't have sex like all the time. It could be a month later. Hey, what you doing? Bruh, guess what happened? I got baby mama drama. So what I'm saying, it was a friendship. He thought he can confide yeah, in me. Yeah, friendship soul tie. No, just <laughs> what? No, no, I mean, that's what it sounds like. Wait, so no, we were friends with but before we had sex for a whole year. Mm -hmm. we, it took a whole year for us to have sex. But all that fucked up energy, I it saw came. that that year before. Okay, so but being But being just, oh, like whatever. I'm like, okay. I'll still have sex, but he presented fucked up ass energy before we ever got in the bed with each other. So my thing, if I would have checked myself yeah, before then, yourself. I would have been like, his energy been fucked up and you can't change it. Right. Tell me that person can change their energy. So I feel like when people say, oh, like sex and blah, blah, this, and it's like that person had show at least one sign of yeah. fucked upness or whatever before you guys laid in bed together you may have thought it was something small and you was like oh, okay well i'll let that slide but no that person started showing true pieces of themselves and you ignored it or just was like oh, okay i think i can deal with it and then other fucked upness came out of it I got my point there. I just um, want to. Like the third time <laughs> I just want like y'all to paint a picture of what a soul tie looks like. Like I feel like I'm a visual person, so I'm just trying to like think of some examples. I know for me, one time somebody mentioned if you had sex with somebody like three years ago and then you see them and you give them a hug and all that, like those feelings come back. Those like that's the sign of like a soul tie because you still have that person like a part of you. Do y'all agree with that or? Is that not a good picture of a soul tie? I don't know. I'm just trying to like, I'm trying to visualize some examples because besides like fucking somebody and then feeling how they feel, like I don't even, I don't even know any more examples of a soul tie. Like what does a soul tie look like? How do you recognize? Like how do you even know that you that tied to somebody, you know? So like, that's what my question is. Well, who created the term soul tie? Maybe go back and see what that person says who threw it out there. Like, what are some examples of it? Like, how how would we know? I know I had, I had this, uh... That's the first part, right? 
with this guy I met in college, the summer before going to sophomore year, and we were like super duper close. I'm gonna use the word inseparable. We were like just that close, and like we didn't. Oh, what was that? I was so I was 19. So we didn't have sex until I the day after I turned 21. Anyway, because she has salt. I was So, which would have been like two, three years later. And then on until 22, 23, I think, we had this like weird connection relationship where it was like, y'all saw the movie Hancock? Mm -hmm. Everybody seen Hancock where when you were right, away, you were soon. super weak, right? Super weak. I mean, when you were together, you were like super weak, but then when you were apart, you were super strong or whatever. It was a certain point where he kept referring to us as that situation because it's like, well, I'm away from you. It's like we're good mm -hmm. and we can't blah, blah, blah. But then when we get together, we have we got great chemistry. And it was like, this is where it's supposed to lead us down. But then I don't have my shit together when I'm with you. But mm -hmm. when I was away from you, I'm so good. It's like nothing else exists. But it's like nothing exists. Right. It was like a drug being near you Ooh, that I wanted more. to continue. However, <laughs> When someone said it to me later, they were like, porn that's toxic as fuck. It's crazy. It was, that's the first thing that popped in my mind. It like, was so toxic. I mean, we I were like. I know we never overused that phrase, but that's but what it, this was, I mean, we was like fighting it at night. It was a hot ass mess. But it was like, okay. You know, like, mm -hmm. okay, well, now we can. We can shut up. But, uh, <laughs> um, but that's okay. So I know later someone said to me, like, Besides the toxic part, that is a soul tie, and okay. you gotta get your shit together. Because now think about all the things that you've never dealt with that you're now dealing with mm. because you're dealing with this situation. And it took me years to finally be like, you know what, I love your ass, but from a distance. That's an example. I like that example. So I don't know. I don't know. That's what I automatically think about when I think about. So ties. And even now, it's interesting because, you know, I tell Kenny all the time, like, I can have friendships with people that I've dealt with in the past because I under, I recognize if something doesn't work, I'm not gonna it mind. just doesn't work. That's how and I feel. If I tell you that I'm here for you and I'm your friend, that's what I mean. But if I love you, I always love that. <laughs> but that's it for me. It's like, I don't, that connection is gone for me. So once we break up and we've said our goodbyes. It's damn near be attraction. It's like, all that. All right. Right. I want to see you just right. no like, more. you look kind of gross now. Like, yeah, that's how I feel about that. But, <laughs> see, Kenny doesn't, he doesn't really get that, but I think he doesn't get it from the guy point of view. But I uh, had a party about I two years it. ago and the guy came to the party. He like hit me up the day of the party. Hey, heard you were having a party. I want to make sure I say happy birthday to you. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not asking to come. I invited him anyway. He was kidding, he was serious. But at my party, shit went down that he was involved in. And it sent me right back. I'm like, well, the first thing I'm like, oh my God, I gotta protect him, make sure he's okay. And, da, da, da. and then Kenny stopped me. He was like, why are you doing that to yourself? She had a soul time. I'm like, you're right. I've come so far. You gotta let this thing that was horrible. go. Yeah, it was. I need to do way better, So, I, was I think that's, that's what I think about when I think about soul ties. Okay. That toxic ass bullshit. What about you, Brady? You got an example? I don't, because I don't know if I fully believe in I mean, she gave us all the time. Yeah. I mean, that's like, just, I don't know. Like, he showed fucked up behaviors before. I don't know if it's soul tie. It's just maybe you didn't check yourself to realize, hey, he was fucked up before. Unless he only took some deep therapy, he's probably still going to be fucked up and he just has a fucked up ass energy. So, and I can't help it. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't help him or her. Um, yeah, I believe in connections with people. Cause, <laughs> so women can be fucked up. So it's just like, women can be fucked up. So, <laughs> I'm looking at you. Um, <laughs> women can be fucked up. It's just not men that are fucked up people out here. Women can yeah, be as well. Some, like we got so, fuck girls. It's just like, yeah. and then also, shit. when y'all talk about so soul ties and that, that and being toxic, are you the toxic one? Mm. I was not. Girl, you just said it. See, I was. I used to be very toxic. But also, so you talk about the ties of things and like, oh, you're saying, oh, it was toxic sex. 
It's just I believe that maybe I had saw what I call ghetto ass love and I thought that this was a part of it. Oh, and it no. actually had nothing to do with anything. It wasn't oh. it was just we both just had fucked up views on how we thought it was supposed to be, oh we're gonna fight and then have sex. No, that's stupid. Like mm -hmm. that is sounds so ghetto. I just realized how right ghetto was. Uh, yeah, so, so <laughs> I was so funny. I mean, I'm still ghetto. I'm an no, adult. I, I, yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. And yeah. it's so hard to leave because you're, you're tied to that person. Yeah, in their soul. Because this is just a body in our souls. Are you or you just feel like, oh, let me, I gotta go through this so we no, can the, why? grow through it, go through it. Fuck oh, that shit. Mm -mm. I didn't believe it. No. I'm it's a soul tie. Was because you were younger? And also, like, a whole thing about soul tie, like, 19 year old me is way different than 32 year old me. So to For say sure. I'm still tied to a motherfucker from when I was 19 to now, I feel that is a. No, you can break them. That's an extreme. I feel but that's a dream. Or the fact that you probably were, you know, at the moment, but you probably did not recognize what it was. So I'm tired of you being ashy. I know, right? Like, bitch, why the fuck are you so dry? Because I didn't put lotion on. We see that. Yeah. Oh, my thing is, the whole damn trip, she asked me for lotion. I did. Every two motherfucking seconds. And she got that Nivea. Yeah. Cool. Mom, where did. your lotion at? Because I'm putting on bubbles. So I looked it up. Literally, it's just saying that a soul tie is not easily broken. It's not saying that it can't be. You, you don't Which have to be. To grow from you don't have to be tied to a person forever. But that whole, this whole generation, their little turns about digmatized and situationships, all that shit is soul ties. Just call it what it is. I mean, they put little fancy terms on it, but if I'm looking at the definition. But so, or is it not you being held accountable for your own actual actions? Because you keep putting terms on, oh, I was digmatized, or is it soul tie? No, it's you and your it's behavior. harder because it's your soul. That's not something that's easy. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit harder than saying, one, it's one thing to say it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this nigga, but it's like, this nigga's like beating me. This nigga's doing everything to hurt me, but I'm still tied to him. Like, that's hard. It's not easy to just leave somebody when your soul is tied to them. Like, or it's if easier to clean your brain to yours, everybody. Like, just like yeah. it's just harder. It's not impossible to like let go of soul tie, but I feel like, I get what you're saying, but I feel like soul, all that stuff is, <laughs> Under the umbrella of soul ties, situationships, stigmatized, like all that shit. So maybe don't get in a situation shit if you don't want to have a soul tie. I mean, but a lot of things are easier said than done. But if you don't, and also it's like things, it's like they're in your mind. You can't help but think about them because it's it's your mind. It's too physical. Years. Well, maybe I, so that's why I feel like I've never been had a soul tie or digmatized well, because. because Void, right? I just looked on the yeah, dictionary. Causing you to feel unwhole, as if you're giving up some of yourself. That sounds like you're mm -hmm. trying to fill a void, unchangeable that cannot be easily possessed again. Mm -hmm. I felt that with that situation. And the little sentence they have is, "We have soul ties. We slept together months ago, but sometimes I still feel connected to him, like it was just yesterday, though he did me wrong." That so too. I feel like okay. So with that, I've never. I don't think I've had a soul tie. Out of all the definitions we've given. I don't think I no like okay so we have so we have stigmatized I have not okay because I made okay so for some odd reason you just couldn't leave no I I've, I've been single for so long okay, you're different right. reasons that I didn't leave was because <laughs> so one of my exes I didn't leave was because I lost my scholarship in college it had nothing to do with his dick it just knew that okay we stick together the school that he's going to is going to offer me a scholarship and they did. So it was like, it wasn't digmatized. It was just like, oh, uh, mutual benefiting each other. I want that. I lost my scholarship. I need my school to pay for it. Luckily, I went to another school. Actually, I wrote a letter and said I'm just going through some shit until they get my scholarship back. But it, well, I didn't stick around because of the dick. I stuck around because I wanted my schooling paid for. Um, the other two relationships... <laughs> I cheated on them, but I stuck around for financial benefits. Once again, it had nothing to do with So you sex. cheated on everybody. everybody. And they knew about it? Yes, I told them. It sounded like he was soul tied to you then. 
Um, I don't know, cause they was cheating too. It was just, I don't know, but it was like, okay, we are, we are, Jesus. I got financial gains from it. So it was like, okay, well, this is why I'm still around until finally I was like, uh, I'm where I want to be. I have a job that I wanted. Thanks for helping me get that. Peace out. Um, so you were financially tied. That's funny. <laughs> yes, exactly. Financially tied. And so like now to this day, like we're all still cool. Um, I ran into one like a few weeks ago. Hey, B, I'm actually with another guy. All right. I wasn't talking to the guy like that. Just a friend. Okay. We're all sent the bar having drinks, talking to eat. Pays for mine and the meal. Peace out, see you later. Haven't had sex since we broke up. Another guy, he sees his girlfriend, but who do you speak to first? Me, hey, how are you doing? All right, bye. Do I want to have sex with him? I'm no. Sure he's not with her anymore. No, I do not want to have sex with him at all. Um, when we were together, at times, people, I enjoyed them. And that was it. I enjoyed Maybe our moments right together. Right book of how you managed to be how old are you? 30? 32. 32 and I have had a soul tie to me. Maybe you can help some other people, like, because there's something behind that, like, you must have, like, guarded your energy so much, like, you got a wall left or... I think that that's probably what it is. <laughs> like, like, it's like, I, I just, I can't relate, but I was, I'm, like, that's dope that you can. Maybe, maybe not, but it, 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 it is, like... I mean, I feel like my soul ties are part of my journey for sure, but I could deal deal with some, with, deal without some of them. So I'm saying, like, mm. so go ahead and write that book. Let's know yeah. what you did. Like, yeah. she said she was just sticking around for the month. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 Well, I hung around a lot of guys, oh, and I saw how the guys were treating women. So it was just like, and I saw how they were, and I was just like, so you was playing the game like a man. Almost. Yeah, I'm like, that's not going to be. Think like a man. Me, right? Well, okay, that's very interesting. Y'all can uh, DM Brittany and uh, ask her how she was able to make it to 32 years without a soul tie. A soul tie. In the meantime, Britt Brett, give us your uh, self care tip for the day. As it was stated earlier um, in the podcast. I don't think I've ever called you Brit Brett, but it just rolled off my tongue. Yeah. <laughs> um, get tested. That. Be in charge of your sexual health. And if you want to get tested every week, that is absolutely okay. I don't know if you want to get your blood drawn every time. But anyway, just get tested. It is okay. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And don't let anybody make you feel that it is. Um, my original one I'm changing to, um, it's kind of the same thing, you know, being accountable for your own health and everything. Mine is going to be, you don't have to have sex, people. I know we talked about virginity being a social construct. You don't have to do it if you don't want to do it. And that, people, is protecting yourself right there by not doing it because you don't want to do it. Mental, physical, and in my case, spiritual. So that is my... That is my self care tip. Protect your spirit. Facts. Um, mine, I guess, is on the subject of birth control. I would say before you just go out and just get the traditional pill or IUD or whatever, just do some research. Because I feel like there are natural ways. Birth control affects you in more ways than people tell you. Um, I was a whole bitch on birth control. Girl, same. I didn't like how I, how I felt and how I acted. I'm like, why am I even? doing this right now. I was just happy five seconds ago. Now I'm yelling. Like the mood swings are real. So I would suggest like maybe getting a period tracker app. Um I have one. It's called P Tracker. And it lets me know when my period is expected. It lets me know when I'm ovulating. It lets me know when I'm fertile. And I feel like knowing that information and I'm being a sexually active adult is very helpful. And I feel like if you know your body it's way more effective than birth control and it comes with way less side effects. So that's my advice. Get a period tracker app. Sounds no, good. Bad. Sounds good. Well, I guess that is wrapping up episode four, sex education part two. I think that's what we named the first one, right? Isn't sound right? right. Let's talk about sex, baby. Uh, Let's talk about me. No, you and me. Wait, you okay. Okay. I'm with me because I'm all about me. Let's talk about me. But yeah, I guess that's me. That's it. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube.
YouTube, like, share, subscribe, and I guess we will talk to you guys and next time. Peace out.